Hello, and welcome to the Regenerative Warrior Podcast. Today, what we're going to be doing is this is part three of how to write a best-selling book in 90 days or less. And the first two parts, in part one, we discussed why you should write a book, why I believe that every business person or every business should have a book about how you solve your client's problems. The second episode we talked about was the common myths that people have about writing book. What stops them from doing that? So if you haven't heard those two things, I would recommend that you go to those podcasts and learn that information first before we get into the mechanics of writing a book. So today's podcast is specifically on what is it you're going to actually write about. And that's what's next on the Regenerative Warrior Show. Welcome to the Regenerative Warrior Podcast, Doctor's Edition. One of the fastest growing regenerative medicine and anti-aging podcasts in the world. Each and every Tuesday and Thursday, I talk to the top experts to show doctors how to market, manage, and magnify their practice to help more people and make more money. Each episode is short and to the point without wasting your time with pointless conversation. Learn the skills to be successful without traveling to seminars or paying for expensive consulting fees. Are you ready? Because I am. I'm Dr. Ross Carter, and it's time to start the Regenerative Warrior Podcast now. All right, welcome back. Now, today, what we're going to do is focus on really what the purpose of this book is all about. And we're going to try to figure out the content that we're going to write about. Now, when you're looking at content, this should not be, I don't think, a real story about how great you are. You don't want to come off as arrogant and No one really wants probably to read a book about your life. What they want to do is solve a problem that they have. And hopefully you have a solution that's unique and interesting and differentiates yourself from your competitors. And that's really what we're going to talk about. And we're going to provide valuable content so that the person who's reading it believes and sees that you are actually the expert in this industry or whatever it is, and that you actually do provide a solution to their issue. So today, let's talk about how to come up with the content. When you start with this, and now I know if you're driving, it'll be a little difficult. But if you have a moment, what I would do is just take out a piece of paper. If you've ever done a mind map, basically what you're going to do is put a circle in the middle and you're going to talk about really what your book is. You want to say, this is my book is about blank. Let's say knee pain or back pain or whatever it is that your book is all about. And so you'll put that in the middle. Then what we want to do is come up with chapters or subcategories that we're going to talk about related to this topic. So I'm going to use an example and make this easy. So what we'll do is let's say you help people with knee problems. So you're wanting to write a book for clients or potential people that have problems with their knees. So you want to have the ultimate solution to their knee issues. If you put in the circle in the middle, you say solutions to knee pain. Let's just make that as our basic title for the moment. Now, we're going to talk about the titles and subtitles later on. Right now, we have to figure out what our content is going to become. And and that's really what we're going to talk about now. So when you're talking about, let's say in this case, knee solutions, first, we're going to talk about things like, well, if you're already treating knee problems, what are the things that people ask you about? Let's say you're a doctor and you treat knee conditions. Now, a patient comes to you and says, hey, doc, I'm not really sure what exercises are good to help with knee problems or what exercises should I not do when I'm trying to strengthen my knees? Can I get massages? Is there any at-home therapies I can do to help my knee? Should I stop running Or should I start walking? Or should there be some shoes that specific shoes that I can wear? Or is there a brace that I can take or use? Or is there supplements that would help these things? Is heat better? Is ice better? Or should I do other things? So what you're doing is you're coming up with the most common questions because you want to talk about your client is thinking these questions, some of them. And so what you're going to do is answer those questions up front. So if they're thinking, well, I need to get my knee fixed, but I really like to run. How can I still enjoy running with a knee problem or can I? So what you're going to do is you're going to come up with all the questions that you think this client would come up with. So let's say your top 10. Now, hopefully you can come up with more, but you want to do at least 10 to 15 things that people ask you already that they want to know about. And what you're going to do is write down each one of those questions. All right. So just make a line for each question and 
say, can I run when I have knee pain? And then we're going to make subcategories from that. So right now, you're going to think of as many questions that are commonly asked to you, and you're going to write all of those questions now. All right. Next section is you want to write down the things that they should be asking. For example, like if you have a special technique on how you help with this condition, you need to write, well, how do you compare to another doctor? Or what questions should this person be asking a doctor when they go to a doctor for their knees? What questions should they be asking their doctors? So you're really looking for the frequently should ask questions, the questions that you wish your client would ask you. So sometimes they're a little bit more difficult to come up with, but they're really the should ask questions. Really, ideally, you want to get 10 of those. So in this case, we've got 10 frequently asked questions, and then we should have around 10 should ask questions. So that should be at least 20 questions. Now, then what you're going to do, and you can do this on your computer if you like to type. I don't really particularly like to type a lot of information. So what I'll do is I want to record the answers so that I can just ad lib it, just talk to myself or just talk as if I was talking to a client. So there are services that are online that you can just talk into your phone and they will transcribe your information word for word. Now, a couple services that I like are Rev, R-E-V dot com. And there's one called Timmy, T-E-M-I dot com. Now, I don't really know if they're different. I think they may work together, but they're two services that will transcribe your content. Now, the reason I like Timmy better typically is because they have the option or they only do a computer that does the transcribing and that saves you money. However, they range from 10 to 25 cents per minute. Now, if you're doing Rev, for example, and you want a person to listen to it and transcribe it perfectly, which you can do, it'll cost you about $1.25 a minute. They've recently raised their rates. So basically, you can just take your content, talk into your phone. What I'll do is I'll just literally on these apps, you press a record button on the app. It'll start recording everything you want to say. You can even pause it. So if you have a break or, you know, you have to think more, just pause it so you don't get charged for that time and then continue the recording. And then when you're done, just press stop. And then what you'll do is push a little button that'll say transcribe. And if once you have your account set up, what it'll do is it'll transcribe it. And depending on how you're doing it, if it's electronic from AI computers or whatever, that's typically depending on how long it is, five to 10 minutes. If it's a person, then that'll take longer, but it'll be more accurate. And then what you do is you can look in your app and you can actually see like a video. If it's a video content, they do video content too. You'll see the file, the audio, and you can play it and then read along with your transcript and make changes to the transcript as you do it. That way you'll have everything that you just said about this specific topic all written out and you didn't have to type anything. And obviously you can talk a lot faster than you're going to be able to type. So I would recommend you sit down. You take your at least 10 frequently asked questions and then 10 of the questions that you wish your client would be asking. And then you come up with an extended version of the answer is give as much content and detail as you can for each one of the questions. Also, you want to put in, let's say a patient had the same question and this helped them solve a problem. And then you can say, well, a client of mine had this question because they were doing this, that, and the other. So you can tell patient stories or client stories inside this section. So you want to fill the content as much as you possible so that the person who is reading, you know, it relates back to them because they probably were thinking something along the same lines. So you want to record all your responses and put that in there. Now, also, you're going to think about client stories and testimonials. So this will be not necessarily in this section, but are you working with people with a condition and they say they've gotten great results, right? Well, now you can put all these people in your book. And what's great about doing this is several things. Number one, it gives you a lot of credibility. You can put a picture of them in the book. And plus, who's going to buy your book? Well, you don't necessarily worry about them buying it, but who's going to get your book and send it to all their friends? That's right. So it's a great referral mechanism, right? So you say, Linda, I know you had some problems with your headaches and we helped that. And I'm writing a book about that and some of the things that we use with you. And so what I wanted to do was, if it's okay, I'd like to put a testimonial or your story in our book. 
Now, a lot of people will say yes to this and they'll be excited about it. And when the book comes out, what you do is you give them a book and say, hey, do you have any friends that would like you to you want to send your book that this is your content to that's in your in this book and send it to somebody else. So you can send your book out to their friends. Great referral source, right? Much better than cold leads, right? So that would be a testimonial section. Also, do you put a lot of content online? Do you put stuff on your website, for example? You can take the stories and information from your website. You can also look on your social media pages. Maybe you have stuff that you've tweeted or you Facebooked or LinkedIn or whatever. You can take content that you've actually posted and repurpose that basically. And you're going to put the content in your book as well. Even email. Sometimes you'll actually answer questions or comments or say things like an advertising campaign through emails. And you can actually include that information in your book as well. Hi, sorry for the interruption. Advanced Regenerative Medicine Institute has announced their second annual Evolve Conference, which I will be speaking at. So if you want to join me on February 7th through the 9th, which is about a month away, in Salt Lake City, Utah, you can get a 15% discount on your registration when you use the code WARRIOR15. That's WARRIOR15, and you get 15% off. Back to the show. Now, the other challenge is Okay, so now that you've said all this content, now you've gotten a bunch of information, then you have to understand the difference between a writer and an author. And the reason I want you to understand this is because you don't have to become a writer. That's what holds back a lot of people is they think they have to become this expert, amazing writer. But like I said before, you don't need to be a writer. You can be an author. So you're going to give this content to somebody who can take those words and expand them and make them into something interesting. And that's what the writer's going to do. You're going to give them the raw content and they're going to take that and make it into something interesting. So keep that in mind that you're not going to have to do all these things. Now, this, I love this technique and this works really, really well. All right. So what you're going to do is we're going to look up other people's content to use to see if we want to use some of their ideas because we don't have to reinvent the wheel here, especially if it's a more common condition. Let's go back with the example of knee pain. So you want to write a book about how to take care of your knees. What I would do is go into Amazon. And Amazon has a little down arrow and you can search the books. So what you do is you put, let's say, a keyword of knee pain. And when you do that, and I'm doing that now, what comes up is a bunch of books, right? And so I see one here and it says the knee pain Bible. And it's a self-care guide to eliminating knee pain and returning to the movements you love. All right. Fantastic. So if you look at it, it has three and a half stars, 10 ratings. That's not bad. And you see the picture of the book. And then what you can do is on the top of the book, here's the coolest thing. It says, look inside. So you're like, cool. So what you'll do is you'll get to see some of the content, right? But the most important content you'll actually get to see, it's the table of content. So what I'd suggest is set up an Excel file, right? Open up an Excel file, blank Excel. And then what you're going to do is you're going to look through the contents of these books and you're going to pick out any of the chapters that sound like something you want to talk about. Now, obviously, you're not going to copy their chapter. You're just going to use the chapter title as kind of a talking point. So you would say, okay, if I look at this, it says table of contents is forward and how this book is going to help you. And it has my story. So he's talking about himself. And then it says questions, right? There you go with the frequently asked questions. If I had one question to ask, how does the knee function? That's a great one. So people want to know how the knee functions. Why does everyone have it wrong? Okay. So people that say, you know, common myths that aren't true, trigger points, fibrosis, adhesions, the muscles that are involved. Let's see, the hip flexors, the knee pain, exercises, painkillers, supportive devices. See, surgery. See, this guy's got a lot of good content. So you could take each one of those that you like and put it in each line of your Excel document. And then what you want to do is go to your next book and see the same thing. So you're going to go through all these books, as many as you really need, so that you should be able to find enough topics to talk about. Now, how many are we looking for? I mean, the chapters, I would say 10 to 15 good chapters is going to fill up a book. So most people don't know how long a book should be. So I would suggest that you don't want it to be a pamphlet. Okay. A pamphlet doesn't hold any value. If it has a spine on it and it has the name of the book and your author on the spine, I feel that's more of a book, right? 
So in these cases, you want to be a little above 100 pages or so. Let's say 120 is a really safe number. That way it looks like it's a nice size book and it's a six by nine is probably what you want to order. I don't think you should do anything smaller and you don't want to go too big. So a six by nine book and you want to have, say, 120 pages. Now, how many words can that be? Well, that's going to be maybe 30 to 40,000 words based on your spacing and your fonts and things like that. And if you have pictures, but 30 to 40,000 words. Now, that sounds like a lot. And so here's how you think of it. Most people talk about 125 to 150 words per minute. So what you're going to do is you'll talk out your book. Let's say you can talk about a topic for 10 minutes a day. If you do that, what you're doing is you're going to fill up about 10, well, the number of pages. Actually, let's say you can put 250 words on a page. Normally, it's a little less. But in this case, let's say that. So every two minutes you speak will fill up one page of content without pictures and with a small font. So if you think about that and you do that, say, five days a week. So if we've got 10 minutes of content a day, we've filled up five pages in a day. If we do that for five days, we've got 25 pages. And if you do that for, say, four to six weeks, in this case, five, you're going to about to have a 125 page book. So this is clearly way under 90 days. So you're just above a month of time. Now you've got other things you're going to have to do, but this is the basic content and you can have all this stuff transcribed and written for you by a writer. So that's really some of the best ways that I've found to get content. You take your frequently asked questions, your frequently should ask questions, and then also look on Amazon books and take titles and chapters that someone's already written. And then you really have the basis of the content. And then what you're just going to do is on each chapter, you're going to subdivide that as well. Think about, say, another five questions in that area. And I've got like an example for that. Let me share with you how that is. All right. So, for example, let's take a different topic and not medical. Let's say we are doing salespeople. So we want to talk about attitude is their first thing. And then we're just going to go down. We're going to pick a lot of different topics about attitude. How about closing on sales, prospecting, handling objections, attitude, rapport, network. You're just going to go through all these things. And let's say we're going to talk about one chapter in self-confidence. Now, when we're talking about self-confidence, what are the areas or the ingredients that actually make up this chapter? Well, you could talk about, say, goal setting or exercise, nutrition, laughter, stress relief, balance, trust, celebration, helping others. So that's the areas of ingredients that are going to talk about this self-confidence. So you're going to divide all that out and you're going to have all these ingredients for this chapter. And then you're going to create parts of, you know, you're going to talk about each one of those different topics. So that's really how you get your content. You don't have to make this like step one, It was a dark and stormy night. No, you don't do it that way. What you want to do is create an outline. So you have a basic outline of the 10 to 15 chapters. And then on each chapter, you're going to find the ingredients that are going to make up that chapter. So you're baking a cake here. Then once you have those ingredients, you're going to expand on those and you're going to talk about them. You're going to include your frequently asked questions. You're going to include the frequently should ask questions and your testimonials. That should be enough content truly to fill up a standard 120 page book. So that's how I would start this. And I love the uh, Amazon idea. It really, really can make a huge difference and save you a lot of time and effort. Now, obviously I'm not saying plagiarize anybody, but looking at their chapters and talking about muscles of the knee, for example, is not plagiarizing, right? But it's a good topic that you probably want to cover and you call it whatever you want. So those are really how you get the content created. And that is all I want to talk to you today because I want you to actually start doing these things. You've got to, I'll give you a week and I want you to start putting together your ideas for what your book is about. And I want you to create your chapters. And when I say sub chapters, the ingredients of that chapter and come up with as much basic raw content as you can. And like I said, use those services and just record it like I'm doing here. Just record this and send it to one of these transcription services. And then you have everything written as raw information. And then we'll talk about what to do with that later. But right now, you just want to get your raw data out and think about what you're really trying to talk about with your book. What is the topic? And the goal here is to talk about solving someone's problems. Don't talk about you. You want it to be about them. Okay, You're really a guide and they're the hero. 
Don't become the hero because nobody wants a hero when they're reading about it. They want the guide so they become the hero. So that's it for today. I hope this really helped. And then we'll continue with the content you're going to love next week as well. It's going to be awesome. I look forward to seeing you on the next podcast. Thanks for listening to our podcast. Please subscribe to be notified of all new episodes and also like and share this to help us grow. To find out more about this speaker, become a speaker on our show, to have Dr. Carter present at your event or podcast, learn more about coaching, consulting, tissue allographs, exosomes, supplements, legal help, or how to create a million dollar business card to dominate your local area, we're here to help you. Just text your name and your question to 561 561- 9621231 write that down that's 5619621231 or you can go to our website at drrosscarter.com that's d r r o s s c a r t e r.com to learn more until next time this is dr ross carter signing off, signing off.